we are back once again looking at asset allocation what have the trends been in the first half of the year what do we look to look out for just before we went to the break we were speaking to mr pais mishiri he is the ceo of nabo capital and one key thing that he brought out is we need to start comparing the investment case for kenya with other emerging and frontier markets because at times we, we tend to be narrow uh, narrow sighted with regards to our vision so you're helping us articulate this and i think when we were just before we the break you told us that it's important to look out for the macro mm -hmm. and we were trying to paint a picture is it good is it bad mm -hmm. when we're looking at debt and currents because those are the two key things that we keep hearing mm -hmm. are those key risk factors or mm -hmm. are there other risk factors that we need to pay attention mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. i mean uh, i think our our debt our gear our gearing ratio as a country yes is just about 58 60 percent there about it's not it's not it's not crisis okay to be honest but I think uh, because we've never been here before, okay. we, we, we tend to be quite alarmed. What, we know, what I know is that we shouldn't go beyond this, okay. but I don't think it's a crisis. Okay. Uh, but also there's a history to it. The history is the fact that 10 years ago, we had a financial crisis. Then we, end, we had an era of quantitative easing. Okay. And that brought cheap money. Okay. And that cheap money meant that governments were able to, to borrow yes. cheaply. If you remember 10 years ago, we didn't have the euro bond market. That's very Today true. Today we have euro bond market. And if our government failed to take advantage of that, then I think we would have judged them very harshly. Very true. That's a very good point. Exactly. Okay. So the, the era of quantitative easing is over. The era of cheap money is over. So now we, are, we have to reconfigure our, our borrowing as a country to be able uh, to manage uh, future obligations as far okay. as debt is concerned. So for me, I, I, th I think the noise level is okay because it, hel is a, it has helped to bring awareness and we shouldn't borrow beyond, beyond, beyond the point we are, we are in. Okay. And relatively speaking, we are still, Kenya compared to everybody else, I think is still a, a suitable destination for investing. Okay, yeah. fair enough. Mm -hmm. And then now that brings me to the fixed income market. Yes. So the yield curve has been coming off. Yes. Today the, the T-bills are at 6.3%. Yes. What are your thoughts on that? Short term? Yes, we can do short term and then fix. Uh, yeah. long term. <laughs> I think if you're just focusing to close the year, uh, positive with, uh, with, a good, with a good return, then you can allocate to the fixed income market. Okay. But if you're looking to allocate long term, then I think uh, you need to look at the asset classes uh, much more deeply. The, I think for the fixed income market, the yield is at the the yield curve is at, at the lowest point. Okay, is it the over what duration would you have a sense? Is it over 10 years or is it the uh, lowest that we've ever seen? I, I think it's one of the lowest that we've ever seen. Wow. We are talking right. about 6.3% to about 9.3% for the treasury bills. Okay. Um, I think the average, we just the weighted average yield on the treasury bills is about seven percent. Okay. So that's that's quite low. That's very low. That's quite that's low. That's very low. Uh, if you look at, if especially if you compare to the to the inflation, yes. Uh, even though we've also been able to manage manage, our, manage okay. our inflation, and and maybe that's one of the reasons why we are where we are. But if you look, if you go a little bit further in the curve. Then you, the treasury bonds, which are more than one year, all yes. the way to 30 years. All the way to 30 years. The weighted <laughs> average yield is about 10.38. For a long-term horizon, that's very For a long-term horizon. That's extremely low, Exactly. Guys. So when you think about it, then you're saying that um, the, average weighted, uh, the, the average weighted yield for the treasury bonds is where we were as far as treasury bills. Wow. Uh, That's not a good. Okay, if you're the investor, if, if you're the you're government, the it's it's certainly working exactly, in your favor. Exactly. Exactly. So the government is very happy where, with where we are. Yes. And also, if you go a little bit further and now consider corporate bonds, we at about the average return is about thirteen. 0.98 percent and that's very low also compared to the exactly. risk that you're sitting on. Exactly. That's that end. what you used to get on the on the high, on the longer term maturities. Okay. As far as the yield curve is concerned, so you can see. There has been a lot of benefit. Anybody who's been able to borrow in this era uh, is definitely enjoying. But okay. as far as investors are concerned, then I think now we are, we've hit the bottom and the gear to switch into equities should be full throttle wow. as far as 
anybody who is looking into long-term investment. And what does long-term investment horizon mean? Is it two years? Is it three years? Is it 50 years? Or is it relative? There are different perspectives. Okay. I like what Warren Buffett says. Okay. If you don't have a 10-year investment horizon, then you shouldn't touch stocks. You shouldn't touch stocks. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I think if you have a three-year investment horizon, I think this is a good time okay. to invest in equities. It's a buyer's market. Wow. And, uh, and you should be able to pick some very interesti interesting stocks. Okay. Assuming that the economy also will be able to pick up and support those valuations. Okay. Yeah. So do you have any particular sectors that you, you like or you see uh, favorable terms at least over the next 12 months or any particular counters? Yeah. What are your topics? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, let's assume the rate cup um, is, 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 is amended. I okay. think that would be a quick win. Okay. for anybody who is allocating into the into the banking sector but also I think investors should be cautious because people have been anticipating this rate rate cap re change so we need to ask ourselves how much of the current price has factored in a rate cap change exactly exactly because I think as you said earlier it's probably <laughs> the third year that this finance bill comes out exactly. and people are expecting and then they rally the prices and then it doesn't happen exactly okay so I think if you consider where we started with the rate cap we had a a haircut on all banks and we hit lows that we had never seen before there has been some degree of recovery but and that has taken into consideration that there is going to be a red cup okay the question is how far can we go from here and also how will the red, new red cup look like okay exactly i like to ask this question especially for people who manage money across the continent yes kenyan banks versus nigerian banks because yes. that's the other place that we see capital being allocated to yes who's doing better what banks are actually performing better? I think we all have their, our own issues. Okay. They, uh, remember, the, the, the Nigerian banks are very big in, uh, in size. Okay. And therefore, they were very dependent on the large ticket transactions, which are driven by the oil sector. So also, when you look at their price to book, they've been trading very at maybe worse than it's what actually, you're I think the last Kenya. time I saw it was probably half. Exactly. The 50 it was worse than, worse yes, than Kenya. Yes. Worse than Kenya. So it's in Nigeria now we cannot even extrapolate based on wow. the past. We have to think on a white piece of paper wow. and think of the new environment going okay. forward. Okay. Uh, Kenyan banks, I think, uh, will probably will compare more with Ghanaian banks. Okay. And the Ghanaian banks are able to deliver better ROE today than than, than the Kenyan banks. Oh, is it and therefore they are a little 20, bit more 25? expensive. Yeah, okay. up okay. to 25%. Yeah. Okay, and this yeah. is also after the, the new regulations that have been passed by the, uh, the central bank in Ghana? Yeah, generally, okay. yes. They okay. are, the, the ROE is higher now than ours. Okay, yeah. so what you're saying is banking sector. What about... Um, banking sector, I think we should also continue looking at the telecom, telecom, telecom. sector. So banking and telecom. Yeah, the thing okay. is that what we call telco today is not really telco. It's telco plus something else. Yes. And therefore, um, if you look at, let me give, take the example of Safaricom. Okay. Safaricom is benefiting from all these banks. Okay. Everybody has an has an a, a, an arrangement, a product that is linked to Safaricom, and I therefore know. it is benefiting. Wow. And then there's, of course, is the home fiber. And uh, I remember last year we were just at about we were celebrating a hundred thousand connections. Yes. Today the con the conversation that it's that it's now matched some of the peers. Yes who have been in the fiber uh, sector for some time. Wow. So are we going to see this to be another 25 million customer uh, business? business? All right. uh, if it gets there, then I think we have a very interesting revenue line coming on stream and that would change. Okay. Uh, yeah. Wow. So very interesting. Any other sectors? I've seen Bamburi did announce its numbers. Its yes. comprehensive income was up 30%. Looks yes. like there's a bit of a recovery. So yes. is there, what about consumption, manufacturing? Consumption, I think Cement. we should watch out on what is going to happen in as far as credit growth is concerned. Okay. Um, once the credit growth, this recovery of credit growth, I think we should be able to see the private sector being able to okay. access capital better, and therefore we should be able to see the numbers also reflecting. Okay. Yeah. Looks like there are many ifs that, uh, that are, yes. are playing here. Generally speaking, I think equities market is at a good at a point. good point at and you need to come back to in it but yes. then you're saying your investment horizon has to be about but your investment years. horizon has to be okay a, uh, let's say at least three years at least three years yes. so three years so if focusing on the banks and uh, the telco sector as well as maybe looking out for credit growth because then this will drive consumption into the different areas absolutely maybe cement companies any views on this cement company also have some mixed view here because okay um it will really it also depends a lot on the 
uh, government spending. Okay. Are we going to be spending on huge infrastructure projects okay. where cement is actually one of the wow. one of the raw materials? Okay. With the SGR um, uh, phase one out of the way, I don't know how the phase two is going to go. But okay. If that comes come comes on stream, I think that is going to be a big beneficiary. Remember, the river mining also is still limping. So Bamburi could be a big beneficiary in, wow. in the absence of a lot of uh, competition. Uh, but the real estate generally is not looking at, as vibrant 10 years going forward That's compared to the last okay. uh, 10 years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Or rather big ticket transactions. Big ticket transactions. Many, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that suddenly ties into the big four agenda. So it sounds like your the investment pieces that we need to be focusing on is cash is king, but where is the money being allocated and how is it getting to the economy? Mm -hmm. Either the government has to spend or the consumer has to, one person has to spend, yes. otherwise then we're we are yes. caught up. Yes, yes. Uh, I mean, we're coming to the end of our show, but I'm sure maybe, is there anything that we have missed that is pertinent mm. to this conversation on investing? Yeah, I mean, the, I think <laughs> one of the things that you cannot uh, avoid to speak about is foreign investor participation. Okay. And uh, last year, the, the, the daily turnover, cumulative daily turnover for the whole year was about 175 billion okay. shilling, yeah. billion shillings. Okay. And today is about 98 billion shillings. Yes. Uh, if you extrapolate that, it's go we are probably going to end at about 147, 150 okay. billion shillings, yes. which is less than last year. But when you go deeper, you'll notice last year foreign investors were exiting. Okay. They were net sellers. This year, they're actually net buyers. Wow, that's a very good point. So that tells you there's, there's something that is shifting. The low equity valuations are attracting. Okay. Uh, uh, foreign investors back into the market. They are not yet in full gear, but once that happens, because again, it's relatively speaking. That's true. Uh, then I think that could be another catalyst for okay. the equities market. Oh, and that's very exciting. They say that uh, people don't know they're in a bear market six okay. months in until six months into the bear. Yes. And the same thing also for 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 the for bull the, market. For, for the, the bull, bull market. market. Fantastic. So I think a lot of people might be found. Uh, uh, Okay. Might be surprised. All right. Yes. Thank you so much for the insights here. And there you have it. If you don't wait for another six months before <laughs> you figure out whether it's a bear or a bull, but suddenly there are very many indicators. We are on a 10 year low with regards to the NSC 20 index. Valuations are looking very cheap. And Pius has actually been uh, very kind to share with us what sectors you need to be focusing on. That's the telecom sector, the banking sector, and on any other sector, really, you have to understand is there money coming in either from government spending or consumer spending? Again, the rate cap decision could affect banks, but also it affects the economy in entirety. And I think the best remark that I've had today is I'm always concerned about the macro uh, stability of the country. But we are told as long as we remain at, as well at where we are at with regards to our gearing ratio, it could not get worse. And always look at ourselves compared to other countries. So there you have it. If you're not already investing on the NSC, don't wait for next year at the same time around to be asking what happened and why you missed the run. We had Mr. Pius Mushiri. He is the chief executive officer of Anabo Capital in the Big Ranger Asset and they have given us very in, uh, good insights today. So we look out for us again tomorrow at 2.30, running live on our Facebook page and on our uh, YouTube page, and that's Metropole TV. Thank you for joining us, and good afternoon.